Denso Creative has recently brought back its portfolio brands Isobar and Web Chutney and we are here to find out if the CXM part of it has any other sweeping changes in store. And joining me is Pete Stein, the lead, uh, global lead of Denso CXM. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> so, so tell me every time I think uh, during CAN, Denso has a big announcement to make. So I want to understand, do you have anything coming in from the CXM side? Well, look, the, as Dentsu, our big announcement was around innovating to impact our new brand positioning and really tying to the heritage that we have, innovation that we've had for so many years. Um, as, as Merkel and CXM, um, <clears throat> we don't have any specific announcements. We have a lot of technologies that we're unveiling, like our Gen CX product, which we're very excited to share, uh, which we have working with many of our clients. Um, but no specific announcements. <laughs> All right. You know, apart from being the global lead for uh, Densu CXM, you also retained your America role. I do. Uh, tell us what is the big difference when it comes to uh, the markets like uh, America and the rest of the world, also India. Mm. Well, look, every market is a little bit different. You know, we're focused on end-to-end -end customer experience and making sure that customer journey is amazing and integrated and really brings the brand to life in the way that, that companies want it to. And each market has different regulations around privacy. That's one thing that's a, a massive difference from market to market. Um, and then, of course, the each some brands are uh, global and some are local. So that creates many differences. Um, and some markets are more advanced than others when it comes to digital adoption, right? And some have different behaviors around how, say, the family unit um, is, you know, used to watch television and now has mobile phones as their primary mechanism. So all of those differences in sort of usage and, and um, acceptance of digital tend to drive slightly different uh, work in each market, um, but in general, you know, we're seeing the rise of digital with these global platforms start to be more and more consistent. You know, talking about the rise of digital, of course, we've seen a great uh, that great work in 2022 coming from India. Mm -hmm. But that apart, what do you think are the big challenges that you face when it comes to CXM and India? And uh, how big is that market for you right now? Well, it depends on how you frame it, right? The, mar the, the market in India from a talent and innovation perspective is massive for us. Mm -hmm. So many of the amazing engineers and data scientists that are on our team are based in India. Um, it's a nascent market for us from a, a servicing the market perspective. We see massive opportunity because it's such a scaled market, right? There's very few markets in the world of that side. I think it's the largest now, right? So uh, it is, you know, massive opportunity. It's growing very quickly. It's maturing very fast. The uh, population is very heavily digitally enabled. So it's a massive area of opportunity, but today it's still a nascent market for us. And what are the newer capabilities in social, e-commerce, mobile that can change the game for Denso? I th look, I think the one of the biggest game changers that we see in general is as clients are spending, um, they really want to uh, focus their dollars on reaching consumers, right? Trying to reach their consumers and they wanna get more out of that investment. So we're seeing a lot of connectivity between that investment in dollars, especially in social platforms where a lot of consumers spend time, and then leveraging that into a engagement and a relationship and trying to drive longer term loyalty. And so that's a massive area of opportunity when it comes to connecting that journey within just the social platforms and then bringing that back. So as a business, you have a relationship with that customer, you have that first party data, um, you know who they are. And so that's that's a huge thing. I would say from a mobile standpoint, mobile continues to be the primary way that people are connecting with their friends, with uh, businesses that they're doing. And so I think there's, you know, what we're going to see in that space is just an evolution of how people are using the phone. Um, AI and generative AI is going to put so much power at the fingertips of people. 
And whether that be, you know, for a business to business standpoint, a salesperson out doing um, business or it be a consumer trying to uh, plan a, plan some travel um, around Europe, for example. Um, they, uh, I, w I think that we're going to see the way that people are using the phone evolve fast. And today there's a lot of focus on brand experiences. So tell me how much do you think would brand experiences have an upper hand over regular messaging today? That's a really good question. <clears throat> I think both of those things are so important, right? Campaigns matter. It's, it's important to uh, reach the right consumers or customers with your message um, and, and find ways to stay relevant to them, right? And make sure they understand how you can fit into their lives. And yet, uh, you know, and I'm biased here, but customer experience is massively important. We see that consumers are willing to leave a brand that they love after one bad experience. And so getting that customer experience right is so important. And it's so hard for brands these days because they have to not only, it's not just about getting an advertisement out there, right? It's about delivering a great experience on commerce. It's about supporting the customer with customer service. It's about having the online experience and the offline experience be uh, joined up. So there's a, a lot of challenges for businesses and that's what we're here to help with. And any examples that you would like to give about how a, great, a brand has managed to give great experiences to customers and really flourished? Uh, there's there's so many. I mean, <laughs> uh, there, there's if you just take uh, our clients at um, Enterprise Rent-A-Car where we manage their all of their digital platforms, um, they're able to, uh, they have a really great customer service experience when you go to pick up your car and they've been able to recreate that amazing experience in the app. Mm -hmm. And so it's really seamless when you, you're able to do your whole check-in when you're on the rental bus to go pick up your car so that when you're in, once you get to the store, you can pick up the car and go. That's one example of many but i think that example of like taking friction out where that used to have to go wait in line and you're excited to get on your vacation you want to get going but instead you have to wait in line and give them all your information now you can do that on the rental bus and get going and that's you know i think that's just one small example you know and we're at can uh, and it's generally this is my car for creativity and uh for creative professionals and for media mm -hmm. professionals. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's less rewarding for CXM and do you think there is so much more that can be done at CAN to bring this uh, stream into uh, limelight? It's, uh, I, I agree with you. I think it is primarily an event. It was started, it was the festival of creativity, right? That's the roots. It became a media event mm -hmm. um, and still is a media event as well. Maybe media may be even bigger than creativity now. And, but I am seeing over the past couple of years, a lot of the companies that are focused on customer experience, the Adobe and Salesforce and Snowflake, th these partners of ours are showing up in a big way. And I, I do think the reality is that customer experience and advertising are going to continue to blend much more. And the, as consumers sort of demand that integrated journey, mm -hmm companies are going to be forced to find ways to integrate it all. And so so I think this event will become more and more about CX as well. Fabulous. And let's just end with what are the big campaigns from Denso that you think are capable of uh, winning big this year? And also, uh, I, I, mentioned, I remember mentioning it to you, uh, Global Head, uh, how Denso has always taken home the Asia Pacific uh, agency or network of the year. Mm. Apart from that one time when India backed the agency of the year which is global level mm -hmm. uh, is this going to be the year for that you know that global recognition on the Denso uh, on the can stage well i'm really uh, proud of how we've showed up here and i think a big part of our strategy has been coming together as one Denso, and you can really feel it here when you see all your colleagues from around the world we're really one joined up company um, there's some some of my favorite work uh, came out of the team from New York that they did for 7-Eleven that's already won multiple Lions. Um, and it's some really cool work that was um, integrated in the social where they connected with a professional football player, like American football, I should say, um, and based on some, some activities that he ha had. 
that he talked about, he said, open for business, which connected to the 7-Eleven and brand. And then they reached out to him and built a partnership, created some merchandise around it and had some amazing social activation. So I, for me, I love the work that brings the full palette of tools together, not just, you know, video or, or outdoor, which are, you know, amazing into themselves. But when they bring that social and dynamic aspect and really bring fans into the conversation, that's always my favorite work. So may you maybe see many more uh, campaigns which kind of connect creativity and brand experience from Denso Stable. Yes, and so. you have a fabulous can. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking to me. Okay, take care.